Greetings in the name of Christ to you all on this holy day. I'm Reverend Joan Pell and I bring you a warm welcome from the Ipswich Methodist Circuit. Today is Good Friday and we're remembering the events leading to the crucifixion as Jesus is tried, sentenced and nailed to the cross with a never wavering strength and while offering love and forgiveness for all. And we're going to hear the story of the Last Supper and then the Passion Story, both read from the Gospel of Luke. And it's being read by members of Museum Street, David Wellborn, Colin Western, Kath Calversbert, and myself. And then some of our music comes from the In Harmony Project at St Edmundsbury Cathedral. And our first song was sung by Adrian Pell, along with Neil and Elizabeth Hepplethwaite. And the last one is soloed by Adrian and Adrian also did our video editing. A service will end in silence as we hold this holy moment. Before we start, it would be lovely to know that you were worshipping with us today. So there is a form just above this video for you to type in your name and your location and push the red button and we'll know that you've been here. And then I invite you to return and join us on Easter Day as we celebrate Jesus' resurrection and the hope that fills us. We'll be pondering Jesus' question to Mary, who or what are you looking for? May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And will you join me now in our call to worship, which will be on your screen with your lines in white. The cry of injustice calls us to follow Jesus to the pain of the cross as we prepare to celebrate Christ's rising from death. Jesus chose the way of risk, strengthen us to resist the easy option. Jesus, listen to the voices of the powerless. Help us to hear your word. Jesus showed us grace and mercy. We come seeking your forgiveness and renewal. Jesus embodied humility and righteousness. Fill us with the courage to examine our ways. Jesus respected all without favour. Enable us to seek the good in all things. Jesus sought out the rejected. Teach us to stand alongside the marginalised. Together, we seek to follow your path to justice, rising to the call and demands of discipleship. So as we take these final steps with Jesus to the cross, we're going to open today with number 287. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, see from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all.
Let us come before God in prayer. Almighty God, you are our strength and our sustainer. You are the source of our inspiration and guide along our journey. Be with us, Lord, as we follow in your path this day. May we be blessed and empowered by your spirit to be beacons of hope, even in the darkest hours. And yet we confess that we are not entirely innocent. Forgive us for being calloused to human cruelty, forgetting that every person is a precious child of yours. Forgive us for being nonchalant about injustice, forgetting that it still nails innocence to the cross. Forgive us for thinking that sacrifice is obsolete, forgetting that we still contend against the powers of darkness. But even in the face of betrayal and rebellion, death and denial, fear and despair, God's grace knows no bounds. We are forgiven and set back on the path that leads to wholeness. Today, as the sound of the hammer on the nails echoes in our ears, we remember the pain and prayer and pray for those experiencing war, violence, hunger, homelessness, poverty, addiction, hatred, abuse, racism, homophobia, pollution, extreme weather events, exploitation, eco damage, and the list goes on. Bring forth your new creation and your kingdom on earth. On this day of darkness, we pray in the spirit of Christ who was crucified and who lives and reigns with you, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. During Lent, we have been putting out one candle each Sunday as we have remembered the darkness that can encroach into our world. A little of the light which has come into the world is snuffed out when we give in to temptation. When we do not listen when we fail to seek or offer forgiveness. When we lack the courage to examine our ways. When we take no action because we are afraid of doing the wrong thing. When we fail to stand up for justice.
a God of love, on this Lenten journey, guide us towards the darkness of the cross, emboldening us to rise to the call of each new challenge placed before us, as we trust in your promises, revealing the power of transformation and the hope of resurrection. Amen. Amen. I'm going to share with you now a story of love. It was written by Roddy Hamilton and posted on his Listening to the Stones blog. And then the rest of our service will proceed unannounced. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. John chapter 3 verse 16. Gather round. I have a story to tell of one who reached inside himself and took a handful of love like a pile of stardust and said, this is for you. It's all you need. It's all you'll ever need. There is enough here to change the whole world. Take it. Many laughed at him, mocked him and ignored the invitation. But some dared to take it, and those who did noticed something about this love. They found that they could do what the gift giver could do. They could stand with the lost, welcome the traveller, eat with the hungry. They found themselves doing what the man first did to them, give something of themselves to others. They became like the man, offering themselves. And as they offered themselves, others took the invitation. And many still do. And many still trust. It is enough to change the whole world. When the time came for Jesus and the apostles to eat, Jesus said to them, I have very much wanted to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. I tell you, I will not eat another Passover meal until it's finally eaten in God's kingdom. Jesus took a cup of wine in his hands and gave thanks to God. Then he told the apostles, Take this wine and share it with each other. I tell you that I will not drink any more wine until God's kingdom comes. Jesus took some bread in his hands and gave thanks for it. He broke the bread and handed it to his apostles. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, he took another cup of wine in his hands. This cup is the new covenant by my blood, which is poured out for you. The one who will betray me is here at the table with me. The son of man will die in the way that has been decided for him, but it will be terrible for the one who betrays him. Then the apostles started arguing about who would ever do such a thing. The apostles got into an argument about which one of them was the greatest. So Jesus told them. Foreign kings order their people around and powerful rulers call themselves everyone's friends. But don't be like them. The most important one of you should be like the least important. And your leader should be like a servant. Who do people think is the greatest? A person who is served or one who serves? Isn't it the one who is served? But I have been with you as a servant. You have stayed with me in all my troubles. So I will give you the right to rule as kings 
just as my father has given me the right to rule as a king. You will eat and drink with me in my kingdom, and you will each sit on a throne to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Then Jesus said, Simon, listen to me. Satan has demanded the right to test each one of you, as a farmer does when he separates wheat from the husks. But Simon, I have prayed that your faith will be strong. And when you have come back to me, help the others. Peter said, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to jail and even to die with you. Peter, I tell you that before a rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will say three times that you don't know me. Jesus asked his disciples. When I sent you out without a money bag or a traveling bag or sandals, did you need anything? No, they answered. But now, if you have a money bag, take it with you. Also take a traveling bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell some of your clothes and buy one. Do this because the scriptures say he was considered a criminal. This was written about me and it will soon come true. The disciple said, Lord, here are two swords. Enough of that. attack be my shield my strength and my justice in the midst of uncertainty be my security in the heat of despair be my hope in the trap of fear be my embrace be my release and my courage in God. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things pass. God never changes. Patience achieves all it strives for. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices.
my dearest Lord, you are a bright flame before me, a guiding star above me, a light piercing the darkest places. My dearest Lord, you are a smooth path beneath me, a kindly shepherd behind me, a gentle saviour to welcome me home. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Jesus went out to the Mount of Olives, as he often did, and his disciples went with him. When he got there, he told them, Pray that you won't be tested. Jesus walked on a little way before he knelt down and prayed. Father, if you will, please don't make me suffer by drinking from this cup. But do what you want and not what I want. Then an angel from heaven came to help him. Jesus was in great pain and prayed so sincerely that his sweat fell to the ground like drops of blood. Jesus got up from praying and went over to his disciples. They were asleep and worn out from being so sad. He said to them, Why are you asleep? Wake up and pray that you won't be tested. While Jesus was still speaking, a crowd came up. It was led by Judas, one of the twelve apostles. He went over to Jesus and greeted him with a kiss. Jesus asked Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' disciples saw what was about to happen, they asked, Lord, should we attack them with a sword? One of the disciples even struck at the high priest's servant with his sword and cut off the servant's right ear. Enough of that! Then Jesus touched the servant's ear and healed it. Jesus spoke to the chief priests, the temple police and the leaders of, who had come to arrest him. Why do you come out with swords and clubs and treat me like a criminal? I was with you every day in the temple and you didn't arrest me. For this is your time and darkness is in control. Jesus was arrested and led away to the house of the high priest, while Peter followed at a distance. Some people built a fire in the middle of the courtyard and were sitting around it, and Peter sat there with them, and a servant girl saw him. Then, after she had looked at him carefully, she said, This man was with Jesus. Peter said, Woman, I don't even know that man. A little later, someone else saw Peter and said, you are one of them. No, I'm not. About an hour later, another man insisted, 
This man must have been with Jesus. They both come from Galilee. I don't know what you are talking about. Right then. While Peter was still speaking, a rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered that the Lord had said, before a rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will say three times that you don't know me. Then Peter went out and cried bitterly. The men who were guarding Jesus made fun of him and beat him. They put a blindfold on him and said, tell us who struck you. They kept on insulting Jesus in many other ways. At daybreak, the nation's leaders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law of Moses got together and brought Jesus before their council. They said, tell us, are you the Messiah? If I said so, you wouldn't believe me. And if I asked you a question, you wouldn't answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right side of the mighty God. Then they asked, are you the Son of God? You say I am. They replied, why do we need more witnesses? He said it himself. Everyone in the council got up and led Jesus off to Pilate. They started accusing him and said, we caught this man trying to get our people to riot and to stop paying taxes to the emperor. He also claims that he is the Messiah, our king. Pilate asked Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? Those are your words. Pilate told the chief priests and the crowd, I don't find them guilty of anything. But they all kept on saying, he has been teaching and causing trouble all over Judea. He started in Galilee and has now come all the way here. When Pilate heard this, he asked, Is this man from Galilee? After Pilate learned that Jesus came from the region ruled by Herod, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. For a long time, Herod wanted to see Jesus and was very happy because he finally had his chance. He had heard many things about Jesus and hoped to see him work a miracle. Herod asked him a lot of questions, but Jesus did not answer. Then the chief priests and the teachers of the law of Moses stood up and accused him of all kinds of bad things. Herod and his soldiers made fun of Jesus and insulted him. They put a fine robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends, even though they had been enemies before this. Pilate called together the chief priests, the leaders and the people. He told them, you brought Jesus to me and said he was a troublemaker, but I have questioned him here in front of you, and I have not found him guilty of anything that you say he has done. Herod didn't find him guilty either and, and sent him back. This man doesn't deserve to be put to death. I will just have him beaten with a whip and set free. But the whole crowd shouted, kill Jesus, give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas was in jail because he had started a riot in the city and had murdered someone. 
Pilate wanted to set Jesus free, so he spoke again to the crowds. But they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate spoke to them a third time. But what crime has he done? I have not found him guilty of anything for which he should be put to death. I will have him beaten with a whip and set free. People kept on shouting as loud as they could for Jesus to be put to death. Finally, Pilate gave in. He freed the man who was in jail for rioting and murder because he was the one the crowd wanted to be set free. Then Pilate handed Jesus over for them to do what they wanted with him. As Jesus was being led away, some soldiers grabbed hold of a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene. He was coming in from the fields, but they put the cross on him and made it him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd was following Jesus, and in the crowd a lot of women were crying and weeping for him. Jesus turned to the women and said, Women of Jerusalem, don't cry for me. Cry for yourselves and for your children. Someday people will say women who never had children are really fortunate. At that time, everyone will say to the mountains, fall on us. They will say to the hills, hide us. If this can happen when the wood is green, what do you think will happen when it is dry? Two criminals were led out to be put to death with Jesus. When the soldiers came to the place called the skull, they nailed Jesus to a cross. They also nailed the two criminals to crosses, one on each side of Jesus. And Jesus said, Father, forgive these people. They don't know what they are doing. While the crowd stood there watching Jesus, the soldiers gambled for his clothes and the leaders insulted him by saying he saved others. Now he should save himself if he really is God's chosen Messiah. The soldiers made fun of Jesus and brought him some wine. They said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him was a sign that said, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there also insulted Jesus by saying, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and save us. But the other criminal told the first one off, don't you fear God? Aren't you getting the same punishment as this man? We got what was coming to us, but he didn't do anything wrong. Then he said to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, I promise that today you will be with me in paradise. Around noon, the sky turned dark and stayed that way until the middle of the afternoon. The sun stopped shining and the curtain in the temple split down the middle. And Jesus shouted, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Then he died. When the Roman officer saw what had happened, he praised God and said, it's really true. 
This man was righteous. A crowd had gathered to see the terrible sight. Then after they had seen it, they felt broken hearted and went home. All of Jesus' close friends and the women who had come with him <coughs> from Galilee stood at a distance and watched. There was a man named Joseph who was from Arimathea in Judea. Joseph was a good and honest man and he was eager for God's kingdom to come. He was also a member of the council, but he did not agree with what they had decided. Joseph went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. He took the body down from the cross and wrapped it in fine cloth. Then he put it in a tomb that had been cut out of solid rock and had never been used. It was Friday and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and watched how Jesus' body was placed in the tomb. Then they went to prepare some sweet smelling spices for his burial. But on the Sabbath they rested as the law of Moses commands. We have remembered the events that led Jesus to his crucifixion and now the light of the world has been extinguished. Kyrie eleison Lord have mercy Christ have mercy Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy. Now we wait and trust in God's promises, revealing the power of transformation and the hope of resurrection. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it calls. 
causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Go on your way to watch and wait, trusting in God's promises and the hope of resurrection.